On the agenda tonight, we're going to be taking a look at Dusty Springfield performing Son of a Preacher Man live and in the studio. Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So I've put the live performance through the pitch monitoring software and the original record as well. As always, there's a link in the description below. If you guys want to watch the live performance, I am going to be jumping into this because it is an analysis and we're going to be looking at Dusty's voice on screen. I would suggest watching that live performance is a good idea just to get an idea and a sense of how you feel about the performance once it's finished because we are going to be pointing out a few things about that. So we're going to start with the live performance and I have decreased the volume of the backing just so we can hear Dusty's voice a little bit more up front in the mix but let's jump into it and see what we can hear. Billy Ray was a preacher's son and when his daddy would visit he'd come along when they gather around and started talking, Dad and Billy would take me walking. I threw the backyard, we go walking. Then they look into my eyes. Lord knows to my surprise, the only one who could ever reach me was the son of a preacher man. The only one who could ever teach me was the son of a preacher man. Yes, he was. He was. Oh, yes, he was. Being good isn't always easy No matter how hard I try When it started sweet talking through me Come on, tell me everything is all right Kiss and tell me everything is all right Can I get away again tonight? The only one who could ever reach me Was the son of a preacher man The only one who could ever teach me what is that of a preacher, man? Yes, he was. was. Oh, yes, he was. Yes, he was. How well I remember the look of what was in his eyes. Stealing kisses from me on the side. Taking time to make time. Telling me that he's all mine. Learning from each other's knowing. Looking to see how much we've grown in the old. And I'm just going to jump in here because that is the end of the song. It's always the case that when you're listening to a great voice, you just want to listen to it even more. And that's exactly what happened there. And the fact that it is the isolated vocal that I've removed from the track and then put it over the top of the accompaniment. It gives you an appreciation of how great a voice Dusty had when you compare it with the original that she recorded in the studio, it just sounds exactly the same. Not exactly the same, which we will point out in a second, but just her overall delivery, hitting the notes, just bang on the expression in her voice is consistent. I want to point out just things about Dusty's voice that are just traits. They are always there. So no matter whether she's singing live or in the studio, these things will be in the performance. The first thing, are just these slides, the glissando that we've mentioned in lots of other videos. This might be the most that we've ever seen. With Dusty's performance, she's always sliding into notes and sliding out of notes. Have a listen to this. Everything is our Can I get away again tonight? The only one who could ever reach me. Well, the son of a preacher, man. And just stopping it there, when we're looking at these vocal waves, We've always got these long lines ascending and this is where she's not breaking off the note. She's just keeping this phrase together in one breath but sliding from one note to the next. And even at the end here, if I take it back, have a listen. 
she's got this mm, what's the sound of a preacher man there's the man so she's having that little slide up at the end it's really subtle but this kind of thing is just throughout the performance if we went all the way back and we had a look through you'll see all of these lines look, i mean look at this we're sliding all the way up to the E4 from miles below, and we're then sliding down, we're coming back up again, sliding down, coming back up again, sliding down. So this is just a common trait in Dusty's voice. With this particular song, it gives it that flow, that smoothness. It's like sliding up. It's not like going up one step at a time, as you would do if somebody was going straight from one note to the next, it's more jarring. Whereas here, if you imagine sliding down uh, one note to the next, descending, it is like going down the slide. It's going to have a smoother effect on you emotionally and to your ear rather than someone actually hitting notes as they descend like steps. If you are putting all of those notes in there, it is gonna sound more regimented if you're not sliding, and that might be artistically something that you're going for, but we don't have that in this performance when we listen to Dusty's voice. Even there, when we've got that, Lord knows to my surprise, there's all that, no, it actually slide up and then slide down. The listening to her voice, the soul in her voice, is all about the expression. It's not really about the notes. Because if you start to go to have, la knows to my surprise, and you you can hear how mechanical that is. It sounds contrived because we're, we're starting to sound like we're trying to hit notes rather than singing. And that's why singing is an art form, because great singers are hitting notes, but you're not aware of it because it's just natural and it's subconscious. And they're putting across the expression of the notes, not the mechanical nature of hitting the notes dead on all the time. I want to address why it feels different, this live performance, and why you might feel differently about this live performance after listening to the studio recording and knowing that so well. We're going to now just listen to these isolated vocals and I am going to be jumping into the studio version first. We'll have a listen to this. By the way, the ranges are up on screen as well, so you can refer to those. Pretty much we're in our mezzo-soprano range here. If you can see my arrow, we're in and around the G4, the A4, uh, the B, the C5 maybe. I know that we have a B4 in there. We're just going to jump into the chorus and listen to a tiny section because I want you guys to try and hear the difference between the two. We're going to start with the studio and then we'll jump straight into the live performance. The only boy who could ever teach me. The only boy who could ever teach me. You can hear already in that vocal delivery there's more of a breathy quality to Dusty's voice so that she's connecting her vocal cords more in the live performance. So that's gonna give it a little bit more of an upfront sound, potentially make it sound more um, excitable and not as relaxed because when there's more air going through those vocal cords dynamically, it's not as in your face. So you feel like you have to lean in, it's a lot more subtle. Could you tell the difference between those two? And this is huge because in the live performance, Dusty, is singing the major scale. She's taking notes from the major scale live, but in the studio she was singing notes from the minor scale. And the difference between them, and hopefully you could spot this, but we'll run through it again, but we've got this, the only one who could ever teach me, that ever teach me, is minor. When I go, the only one who could ever teach me, that's now major. Ever teach me. And if we look at the pitch monitoring software, let me just run it forward so we can see the notes that are being hit. Here, the proof is on screen. In the studio, she's hitting a G4, which is the minor note. She's slightly sharp of it, but when she sings it live, she's hitting the G sharp four, and she's slightly sharp of that. So it proves that we are a semitone higher live than we were in the studio, and a semitone higher makes it major. The semitone underneath that is the minor. So 
Really interesting because this changes how you feel about what you're hearing. If it's major, it's uplifting, it's happy. If you've watched that live performance, click on the link in the description below. You'll see that Dusty's dancing and it feels more uplifting even though it is slower, that live performance, than the studio recording. That's why even though it's slower, it sounds more uplifting because we've gone major in the choruses rather than minor. And check this out, we're now going to just let it run on with the knowledge that she's changed from the minor scale to the major scale live. Listen to this. Being good isn't always easy, no matter how I try. That is so major. Na 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 Being good isn't always easy, no matter how I try. You can now hear Na 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 We're now minor. It's such a difference between those two. And we can see here that we had this G4 and the studio's on the left and the live performance is on the right. And look here, the G sharp 4. As I said before, that major is always the semitone above the minor. So we know we're now in a happier place. Just a quick word on the pitch accuracy because Dusty was as accurate in the studio as she was live. She just used the same voice. And we can see that with the vocal lines on screen, the A4 here being dead on, the A4 here being dead on. And we are slightly flat on the E4 in the studio and live so she was consistent even when she wasn't quite hitting the notes dead on she was still consistent with her intervals and I've said before many times that sometimes the best note isn't on the line anyway when we're talking about 440 hertz equal temperament just to finish with we're going to have a little look out for any vibrato if we can spot it and you'll know from the previous videos we're looking for on the screen well hopefully you can hear it but we're looking for on the screen these even waves that follow each other but we'll just go into the studio version when they gather around and start talking that's when Billy would take me walking Out to the backyard we go walking Then he look into my eyes Lord knows to my surprise The only one who could ever reach me Was the son of a preacher man The only boy who could ever teach me Was the son of a preacher man Yes he was He was mm -hmm. Yes he was So the studio version on the left hand side here, the only real piece of vibrato we got there was right at the end, and it's more of a hum. Yes, he was. Is hmm, yes, he was. Mm, yes, he was. And again, just was, letting that note just descend, slide down. You'll spot throughout this performance the lack of really long-held notes with vibrato because she's just cutting off these phrases and that is going to give it more of that storytelling quality which is exactly what you want with a song like this. But thank you guys for requesting Dusty Springfield to take a look at and to compare the studio and live performance of this song. As always, keep those suggestions, requests coming in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!